Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Uh, much appreciated. Today we have a fun little project today. We're going to be uh, creating a form in React uh, with no NPM packages or anything, just straight up functionality and a form. We're not even using Bootstrap as evidenced by this uh, ugly form. Um, do me a favor. If you like my content and you like React videos or just uh, coding tutorials in general, uh, consider subscribing. I upload pretty frequently, uh, but nothing close to a schedule. It's sort of random. Um, so do me a favor and subscribe and hit the bell icon as well so that you get notified when I upload a new video. Uh, I cover a wide range of topics and I would certainly appreciate it and it helps keep the channel going. Also, if you find this video helpful, please leave a like. And also if you have any questions or, you know, comments of, you know, whatever, uh, please feel free to leave it down below. Uh, that being said, what we're going to do is take a look. This is what we're going to be building. Uh, like I said, nothing spectacular. It doesn't look phenomenal. In fact, it looks pretty horrible. Uh, <laughs> coming from someone who's a designer. Uh, but anyway, the functionality is there, and this is just to get you going in the React uh, form situation, okay? Um, if you're familiar with forms at all, online forms usually, or at least in the past, they've worked with PHP, and then they submit to a database, um, and you do all your form functionality through PHP. Here, we're gonna be using React, i.e. JavaScript, to do this. So person types in their first name, okay, and it, it'll show up down here, types in their email at gmail.com, shows up here, we hit submit, we see form was submitted successfully, and then we're going to, for, for now, we're going to save the, uh, uh, the information to our console, we're not going to, we're not going to submit to a back end or anything like that, we're not going to use Axios, this is just to get you going. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. Uh, I'm going to close this. I'm going to exit out of this because this was just the, the thing. That was just that to, to keep us going. Uh, what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm going to cd into form-app and I'm going to hit code dot so we can open in VS Code. And this is just a blank React uh, blank react um, application. I've cleaned out all the files. If you would like to know how to get started with create react app and how to clean up all the files, I have a video tag thing in the corner and I'll leave it in the description on how to get started with create react app. I go over all the basics. Um, so this is our basic react app. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to so in here is our main app div. So we're going to do main form. No props for this, but uh, so we're going to import. Uh, now we haven't created this yet, but we will. Main form from uh, uh, dot slash components. I don't think I spelled that right. Components. There we go main form now like i said we haven't created this yet but we will so it's going to error out although we're not uh running it yet i have my terminal over here so i open you go here new terminal and then i right click and i move it to the right because i like it that way if you don't find uh no judgment here so i'm going to create that new folder come and this is pretty standard uh react stuff compose Components. Well, okay. I'll be all right. Don't worry about me. Uh, and then we're going to create that main form.js file. Okay. Now I have an extension installed, which I suggest you do the same because it's very helpful and convenient. It is called ES7 React Re Redux GraphQL React Native Snippets. And I also have Prettier installed, which formats my code when I save it which then allows me the code snippets allows me to do this RAC and then I select that and it gives me a boilerplate react function component 
and I'm just going to change this to a capital M. All right, here we are. So we have that. Now let's get the ugliness. Uh, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do as well. Uh, I am going to just copy over. Oops. Give me a sec. I'm going to copy over the CSS uh, here. Yes, I'm opening it in here. So I'm just going to copy the CSS uh, just to I'm going to put it in here. This is just some basic CSS, just some, whoops, just to make it look decent. Sort of decent, not it not completely. Okay. Uh, and I'll have that in the GitHub repo. Okay, so this is our main form here. Right, and we imported it into our app.js file. All right, now, uh, first thing we need to do is bring in our use state hook, because we're going to have use state. We're not going to use effect because we're not changing anything really at least not with use effect. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do, you know what, like I said, let's get the creating our form, let's get that out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna give this main div class name equals main dash form to go coincide with our CSS. Then let's create our form, right? Just like in HTML. Now we don't need an action, and you really won't, uh, even if you were submitting to like Axios or something like that in endpoint, you really don't need that. Uh, so let's do, let's do a label. Actually, no, let's do the input first. Input type of text. We're gonna, oops, we're gonna give it a name. This is what would bind it to the back end. Um, I'm gonna call that name. Uh, we're also going to give it a value that we're going to leave. Uh, we're going to leave blank for right now, but it's curly braces. Okay, we're, we're going to leave that blank for right now, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I'll also give this a placeholder of, uh, you know, first and last, for first and last name. And as many of, his, of you, I'm sure, know already, that just, you know, uh, gives it a little placeholder inside of it. Let's do our next one input. I'm only going to do two of these because after that it would become redundant. Okay, we're going to name this equals, uh, we're going to call this email. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to give it a value, but again, we're going to leave it empty for now. Uh, sure, we'll give it a placeholder of. Uh, Ted Smith at gmail.com so they know that it's an email. I mean, obviously. Okay, and that's it. Uh, one thing I will do also, we'll just we'll say label. We'll give this a label. And this is uh, standard HTML stuff for forms. Uh, we'll say label for name, which is this. It's attached to this. And then we're going to type name in here with a colon. No big deal. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, label. This is all HTML stuff. So for, actually, this is JSX, but uh, it looks like HTML. But you get my point. And email. OK. Uh, hmm. Let's see what this looks like so far. All right, it just formatted it, as you can see. Hmm. Anyway, that's what Prettier does, is it just sort of formats the, the um, all the code uh, for you, which is nice. So I'm going to come over to my terminal, npm start, which is our run command, at least our initial run command that uh, create React app gives us. And it runs, and it runs, and it runs, and it runs. My machine's running a little slow today, guys, so bear with me. I appreciate your patience. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, okay, let's see. What do we got here? Oh, okay, because we, we, we didn't give it a value. So let's just say 
uh, we'll just give it a temporary value. That's right. I meant it to delete the uh, curly braces. Compiling, 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 compiling. Oh, come on. Still not. Let me delete these curly braces. Value. Save. Come on. Sorry about this, guys. I'm not sure what's taking so long. NPM start. In our terminal, it's going to start over again. Opens a new tab. Oh, okay. As you can see, it, <laughs> it technically worked. Again, I'm just running super duper freaking slow today. I don't know why. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, guys. If this takes much longer, I'll, I'll just cut this part out of the video. Come on. There we go. And let's open up our console. Just to make sure we're good. Plus to hide the fact that it's not, <laughs> as you can see, you know, kind of email is up on the second line, whatever. It doesn't matter, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about this. We'll deal with that in a second. Uh, one thing we didn't add was input type of submit, right? This is our submit button. Um, and we're going to say we're going to give it a value of... Submit, okay. There we go, there's our submit button. You know, obviously it does nothing because we haven't given it anything, but see, it has this value and that's cool, hard-coded value. Um, okay, so I believe that's all we have. Uh, well, it's not it for all our HTML. Um, all right, there will be more JSX down here, but we'll deal with that later. Let's deal with the actual functionality now. So what happens is, in order to submit a form, you have to assign each of these inputs a value, which we did, but you have to tie it to a piece of state, all right, in order for it to control what's in here, and then the uh, function that we're gonna use to submit our form then takes that information from the state and sends it to wherever we're going to send it. In this case, we're just going to log it to our console, but normally you would submit it to Axios or whatever, and then it would go to some sort of backend system. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So uh, remember we brought in our use state hook, so we're going to do that now. Const. Uh, now you have to create a piece of state for each input. So if you had eight input fields in here, you'd have eight, um, pieces of state for each one, right? And then a, a function to alter it, to change it, to, or to update it, I guess is a better word. Use state, and initially we're gonna set it to an empty value, an empty string, right? Const email, set email. So we're just doing this for each one. Like I said, if you had eight, nine, 10, whatever, you'd have to do that for each one. Um, I know there's packages out there where you don't have to do that, but in this case, for a basic thing, uh, I'm going to create one more piece of state, and you'll see why in a bit. Results. We're just going to log out uh, onto the screen uh, if the uh, uh, can't talk and type at the same time. If the um, uh, form submission was successful and we're going to initially set it to false. Okay. Cause it's going to be a little bit of conditional logic now. Okay. There's our state. So now what we can do is change our value to curly braces and put name in here. It's always going to be 
the value of our input is always going to be the value of the state. It's controlled by the state, not by hard-coded text in here. Okay. All right. Very good. Now I think, whoops. Good. Save all. Cool, cool, cool. Warning, set name. Don't worry about that. We'll deal with that shortly. Let's refresh. Good. Don't worry about that. Now, as you can see, there's nothing in here, right? But also nothing changes. We can't, we can't type in there either, right? Which you obviously want, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to take care of that. Not now. Actually, yes, let's take care of that now. So in order for us to type in there, which obviously you want, we have to do an on change event. Now on change is a uh, core uh, function with react. So on change and equal to curly braces. That's it. And you have to do that for each one. Okay. On change equals curly braces. Now, what you could do is you can say, um, you could say uh, on change, oops, get tight. on change func function, right? And then do your function up here. Um, but what's easier in the beginning, at least to get started is, so we're going to open a function, an arrow function. Okay. And let's see, we're going to, here's where we're going to set our name and email field. Okay. So, um, all right, so we have that, right? Now we're going to set our name, okay? So that's where we set it, okay? So we're going to update the state on change. So anytime we change this input field, i.e. we type in it, it's going to change. Now what we need to do is put in our event. And what are we going to set the name to? We're going to say e.target.value. Uh, the value of what we're typing in there, right? And that's how we continuously update it. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Let's change, actually, let's copy this. The only time you should copy code is your own. Good, and we're just gonna change this to set email. All right, let's see what that gives us. Good, results, don't worry about that. We'll take care of that later. Good. Refresh. And now you can see we can type. In fact, we can come here. We could do console.log. So each time we type in a letter, it updates. Okay. And that's what we're getting with the on change event or event listener, I should say it is. It's an event listener. So it listens each time we change the input field, it's going to update this state of name or email using this uh, function, right? Cool. Let's see if it's working. It's, oh my God, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I should have restarted. There we go. So as you can see, see each time I type something, it updates, right? Right? And then whatever you leave it at, like this, and then you submit, and it submits. Now, of course, it doesn't do anything yet, but we're going to take care of that now. So this is our submit button. It's got a type of submit. So up here in the form, we're going to do on submit. And this is similar to on change. It's part of React. And we're going to say form submit. This is our function. This is our form submit function. I'm going to get rid of this console.log. And up here, we're going to const form uh, submit, which is the one we just gave it here. So on submit, it's going to uh, do this function, right? Which is an arrow function. Okay. And then now what are we going to do? All right. So first we're going to give it that same E, E event parameter, E dot prevent default function. Uh, now, that, what that does, it just prevents the, the, the page from reloading once you submit. Because obviously that's the whole point. Sorry about that. Because uh, obviously that's the whole point of that. Um, so now what we're going to do here, we're going to say, so our results, so this is going to be our results. So initially it's set to false. 
here we're going to set it to uh, false we're going to set results false initially right then we're going to console.log console.log name email our state right so it's been changed at this point because of this um, normally this is where instead of this you would do your uh, this is where you would do your axios.get you would connect you know and then you would you know do your whole spiel right but instead we're just going to console.log our uh, our information right and then after this we're going to do set results again because this is programmatically it's going down the down the chain here set results to true oops true okay uh, next two things we're going to do is set name back to an empty string so once the form has been submitted we're going to set email set our name and email back to empty strings okay rather than having to go in there and you know re-delete it and all that crap all right and that's it that's really it for our form we're going to do a few other things but uh, we'll get to that in a second you'll still see some warnings but that's just because we're going sort of in a in an order yeah see results don't worry about those warnings we'll take care of those shortly okay so let's try so let's type here and submit and there's there's our information uh, let's see we could type in test smith and we'll type in ted smith at gmail.com and submit and there it is right cool now of course the user doesn't see anything the user is not going to check the console so let's figure out a way um to do that to, so that so that the um, user can you know see what they submit let's just come outside of the form don't do this inside the form we're just going to say uh, hmm we'll say h5 and we're going to say form results okay now here we're going to do a little bit of conditional rendering so we're going to open a JSS JSS expression JSX expression yeah I said that right and we're going to say results results that means if there is results meaning if it's true then we're going to say um, hmm, we're going to say form submitted successfully okay or if it's not then we'll just put an empty string right yeah okay uh, and then right below that let's do an h4 and we're going to say this is where we're going to put their name after they submit it and we'll say h4 again and we'll say their email so it'll pop up on screen this is not something you would normally do i'm just uh, showing you what you can do with this information once you update the state through the form submission okay and there we go we're compiled successfully successfully because we're using results as you know it's set up in the state and all that let's take a look okay so let's refresh good so we're going to type in ted smith and as you can see it pops up here we're going to type in test at test.com and as you can see it pops up here as we're typing mind you submit form success submitted successfully and there we go okay and that's really all there is to it. Like I said, guys, um, up here, this instead of doing this console.log, that's where you would do your Axios or your PHP or whatever it is that you're doing. I'm sorry, not PHP, but rather just uh, however you're submitting your form to the back end to be stored in your database or send it as an email or whatever you're trying to do. But anyway, that's the basic breakdown of forms in React without any packages or anything like that that's it's just straight up logic and coding um all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video it was kind of short but hopefully it steers you in the right direction on how uh to handle form submits um 
and how to handle forms in general. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please like it. Uh, and also subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of when I upload new videos. Uh, much appreciated, guys. Take care and have a Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or whichever. Whichever you celebrate. Take care. Bye.